Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and today we are going to be talking about blade shapes. And we are going to talk about my opinion on what I think is the best blade shape for everyday carry for me personally. And also some downfalls to some blade shapes, maybe some benefits to certain blade shapes. And first we're going to start off with the clip point. Now, just like with every blade shape, there are different styles, there's different kinds, and there's different purposes. And I already have a video on the history of blade shapes. Um, where they came from, what we used to use them for, and what we use them for today. I've actually done that video a couple times. I have a very old one and then a more recent one, and I'm sure I'll do another updated version of it eventually. This is more about just my personal um, experience with blade shapes and what I think they're good for, not, you know, for me personally. Now, clip points... They can be okay, but for me, they have to be a certain kind. Now, what are clip points great for? Well, like I said, there's different styles and different kinds. So a lot of them have very big bellies. And some of them, the tip will point upward. And also, this video isn't, it's about the blade shapes, not the knives. So I'm not going to be naming the knives. The A lot of clip points, the tip goes upward. So... What winds up happening is they're really good for certain things, but then they're not good at all for others. Like for doing heavy use with saw cutting, like say cutting a rope, skinning, where you don't want the tip to puncture the the the, the hide, uh, maybe possibly flaying, things like that, the clip point works great on. But its downfall is using the tip opening things up, uh, tracing things out, utility cuts, things like that. And then also using it in a reverse grip because when you tend to cut in a reverse grip, the material tends to slip up and around the blade. Can you get by with it? Of course, but it's not going to be, it's, you know, the best thing. Then also in slicing tasks, a lot of times they can have the same effect where they can slip out a little bit. So, and geometry is always a factor. We're not going to play geometry into this. Maybe one of these days I'll do another video on geometry and blade shapes and the best geometry for certain blade shapes, yada, yada. But this is specifically just for the blade shape. Now, there are other kinds of clip points, like straight clip points, where the spine of the blade is straight. Now, this is called the buoy, <laughs> but most buoy blades or in a lot of cases, can go up a little bit. So you'll see that they, they actually, the tip of the knife actually goes upward and kind of Persians up a little bit. A Persian blade is a blade that just kind of sweeps upward. Kind of like this. But... This is a straight clip because it just does a straight drop. Now, this can be like in the middle where you can use the tip and you can use the belly and cutting straps isn't, you're going to, you're not going to have too much of a negative effect of the things slipping up and around the blade. So my favorite version of the clip point is the straight clip, especially when it has very little belly like this one. This is a great example of a straight clip point that I do like that works great for me. The tip is in a good area for me to do utility cuts or to cut things out. I still have a good amount of belly for use and I don't tend to have things slip out from around the blade. Now, another blade shape that there's a lot of versions of, man. Just so many, ver all the blade shapes technically there's a lot of versions of, but the Sheep's Foot and Warncliffe. Now, technically, a real Warncliffe would be like this, a straight edge and the spine tapers down to the tip. Now, the Sheep's Foot is usually more like this, where the spine tapers down a little bit and then there's just like a straight drop off and there's a sharp corner that goes down to the tip 
Sheep's foot blades usually have a little bit of belly, but sometimes they are perfectly straight. Worn cliffs are supposed to be perfectly straight. Now, there's lots of different versions, so you're going to see lots of modified worn cliffs, modified sheep foots. And then there's the cleaver blade, which for everyday carry is very similar to the sheep's foot. In many cases, can be, you know, called it universally. You know, you can kind of use them both as an example. Now, this would be a great example of a sheep's foot with a straight edge or even you know you could even consider it kind of you know just a traditional sheep's foot then there's kind of like the mixture where you know this is a sheep's foot blade but the the tip doesn't like dramatically just drop down it kind of just slowly drops down now all of these are great for everyday carry their benefits are utility cuts are really easy to use. They work very well in pinch grips where you can pinch the, the handle and the blade together and you can trace around things, use them for utility cuts, you know, use them in a way where you're basically pinch gripping the knife and the blade together. Now they're also, they can be really good for reverse cuts too, because you don't usually have a lot of belly. Now some of them have more belly than others, so there's always going to be an example where that doesn't work, but in many cases they can be perfectly straight, so you don't really have, you know, the whatever you're cutting slipping around the blade. And also in a lot of cases they can kind of trap material when you're doing certain cuts. Now... I really like the sheep's foot for, or Warncliffe, for everyday carry. Now, the negative part to me is that in a lot of cases, not all, but in a lot of cases, they're not going to be very good at puncturing. So, say if I have a container, um, like a, a 50 gallon tank, plastic tank of water, and I need to puncture the bottom of it to drain it. Well, this isn't going to be the best for that job. So anything you really need for puncturing into something, you know, use your imagination. It's not going to be great for. So that's the negative part for me. So I still like to use them, but I usually like to carry something that has the ability to use its tip alongside one of these. Now, I'm not going to be able to get through all the blade shapes there are, but I'm, you know, I'm just trying to get to a lot of the blade shapes that I do really like for everyday carry, but uh, some of them like, say, blades with recurves we're not going to get into in this video, although I do find a lot of them in a lot of cases are very, very good good they just wouldn't be my first and primary choice especially if we're talking about my only like if i was only going to carry one this is a great example of a little bit of a mixture with a sheep's foot blade it's a great blade shape you technically could get by with a little bit of puncturing but you're gonna have a lot of leverage for utility cuts you have a little bit of belly it is a small knife but you know, like I said, there's a lot of examples of modified versions of each blade shape that can kind of give you the best of two different blade shapes all in one. Tantos. I like Tantos quite a bit, but they wouldn't be my, if I could only carry one, it wouldn't be the Tanto. Now, I do like the Tanto for its ability to have strength towards the tip. Like in this example, we have a hollow grind here, so it's gonna slice really good. But then we have a nice, strong, durable tip for light duty prying and things like that. And they tend to have a very durable tip. So if you are gonna puncture into something, you're not gonna have to worry about the tip, usually. Now, these work really good because they have two tips normally, especially if we're talking about an American Tonto where this edge right here is nice and straight. This can be nice and pokey 
in most cases and you can use it for opening things up and basic things that you would use a tip for where you don't want to puncture in too deep but you also still have the primary tip to use as well so you basically have two tips you know so you don't end up wearing wearing one out too fast you can kind of use them both you know here and there so that is a great thing and i do really like them quite a bit my downfall is that for my personal use they don't do the best for utility cuts even though they can work in a pinch and they do work and in some examples some work better a lot better than others when i really need to get a lot of leverage down into that tip and i need a precision tip this just doesn't give that to me and they usually don't have any belly at all for things you need a belly for you know in a knife But a lot of people love them and they do work really good for a lot of things. And yeah, they, they can every blade shape can be really good for anybody. Persian style blades or trailing point blades. Now these tend to not work great for me. Kind of like really big belly clip points because I can't use the tip as efficiently as I'd like. They tend to let ropes slip up and around them, but they are really good for certain things. Skinning some, in some cases, self-defense, um, because in certain grips, you know, the tip is aiming the direction that you might want. Now, for everyday carry tasks, it's not the best for me, although kind of similar to a straight back, you have a lot of leverage through your belly, so you're going to be able to saw cut ropes really good with it. And there are a lot of tasks that this will excel at skinning, flaying, like I said, saw cutting ropes. Um, now, slicing. You know, you can get by with them, but they can also have the effect of slipping out of the material. But there are other versions where the way the handle shape goes and the way the blade tapers down before it persians back up or trails back up makes it to where you can use the tips for utility cuts where it doesn't have a whole lot of belly but just enough where you can still get by with the soft cuts you can do utility cuts and cutting ropes isn't going to be as negative as say a larger trailing point so i guess it just depends on how much belly it has how high the tip trails up and or persians up and in those cases you know like it, it can basically be like two different blade shapes so but in this example it does work out pretty good and you do have also the benefits still for self-defense and all the you know a lot of the benefits that you would have from you know some trailing points but in most cases the trailing point is my least favorite for everyday carry now let's talk about the good old drop point now the thing with drop points is there are so many different versions of drop points there are a ton of options with drop points. Now, the biggest difference with drop points is how much belly it has. So some have more belly than others. And they, no, let me pull up this one. And some don't, you know, so it just kind of depends on where the, the tip lands. Because there's also the straight back. The straight back is a knife basically kind of how it sounds where the spine of the blade is perfectly straight this one does tend to persian up a little bit where the tip goes up a little bit higher than the spine but for the most part it's almost perfectly straight so what winds up happening is you have a whole lot of belly 
going up to the tip. So the tip is not very easy to use and you wind up losing all the leverage for a utility cut when trying to use this blade shape. But it's really good. The straight back is really good for when you need to cut ropes and you need to get a lot of pressure in your belly. When you need strength, when you need a lot of pressure through the belly and you need to be able to do sawing motions, they're really good for certain tasks. Like I said, like cutting ropes and cutting down into things, you know, they, uh, they can be great. And in many cases, the straight backs tip is very, very durable. So, you know, you can get away without, you can get away with doing heavier stuff with the tip without breaking or chipping it. But they're not going to usually be utility cuts. Now, with the drop point, my favorite version is the type either one where the tip of the blade lands perfectly with the center of the pivot or below. Now, I love this version of the drop point. This is a perfect version of a drop point in my opinion. I'm not, even though I like these ones, the ones where the tip is higher than the center of the pivot, they're not my favorite. I do like them a lot. I love them, but they're not my favorite. And we'll, we see a lot of examples of that where the center of the pivot is lower than the tip. And if it's just a slight bit higher, it's not that big of a deal. But the higher it goes, the, the less I prefer it for my everyday carry. However, these are very versatile blade shapes because they work really good for using your tip. You have a little bit of belly for when you do need to use your belly for things. You can, you can cut straps and stuff without too much of a worry of things slipping up and around the blade, but that does depend on the size of the belly. If it has a whole lot of belly, well, then you, do, you are going to have problems with things slipping up and around the blade. But when the tip is down lower, you have less of a chance of that. I really like drop point blades like this, where there's very, very little belly. So I still have the belly for when I need to use it, but I can get right to my tip when I need to. I have a good flat area right here for push cuts, and if I do need to cut straps, not an issue. I really like these for drop points. Now, my favorite blade shape, and Probably my first choice if I was going to have to choose a blade shape forever, you know, like my only, would be the spear point. Now, why? Why would it be the spear point? Well, you might look at this and say that's a drop point. I look at it as a spear point because the spine from here forward, the spine and the edge do the exact same thing. You see how they kind of follow each other to the tip and the center of the pivot lands perfectly straight with the tip that is a spear point blade to me and i love that i know for sure the belly's not going to be too big and i know for sure i can puncture into things if i need to i know for sure i have a belly for if i don't want to use my tip into something and i do want to use just all belly i can cut straps i can get away with push cuts it's the most versatile blade shape in my opinion and I can always do utility cuts with it. Now, if I was going, going to have a drop point, then I would prefer my tip to be below the center of the pivot, like I was saying with this one. But I think just having a spear point works really good. Now, this is not always a good thing, though. Blade shapes like this are not great, in my opinion, for everyday carry. For self-defense, yes. But they wind up being bad because the thickest point is in the center of the knife. And in that case, uh, yes, they're really good for self-defense, but not so good for cutting. And I like having good geometry. And I know I said we're not going to talk about geometry, but geometry always does play a part. And the spear points that are like this tend to be on the negative side for me personally. But shapes like this work so good for me. I love a good spear point blade, something that I have the... I can use basically the entirety of the blade shape and all its benefits for me personally. I have a good tip. 
I have a little bit of belly because I normally don't need a lot of belly. Now, if I was hunting or uh, skinning or something like that, I'm, that's a different story. So my everyday carry use is going to be separated from certain work knives. Well, actually for work, I prefer this blade shape too. Or more of like a sheep's foot or, um, you know, certain worn cliffs, drop points, spear points. Those are my, my preferred now, there's a couple other blade shapes that can work really good for my everyday carry that are like the sheep's foot blade like this. I really like this blade shape. Some people might even call this a clip point uh, because it does kind of have a clip tip on it. But this style of sheep's foot is perfect for me. I can use the, uh, the tip on it. I have a little bit of belly and you notice the edge does the same thing, kind of like what I'm talking about with the spear points. They're very similar. So this works fantastic for me, especially when the geometry is right. Now, another one is the drop point slash leaf shape that's similar to this. This is one of the best blade shapes for me. I have so much leverage down into that tip with very little belly, but I can still use it, you know, for cutting ropes and things. And it's not too much belly to where I can't cut ropes efficiently. And it's just a fantastic blade shape. A lot of leverage down into the blade when you're holding it, you know, right. And if I do need to do pinch grips, you know, and cut around things or, you know, do things that are uh, utility driven or anything like that, this blade shape works fantastic. And you'll notice, same thing, that it has some similarities to these blade shapes. A little bit less belly, but that's, you know, what I was saying before. I really like a drop point with very little belly. But... For other tasks that are specifically driven, then yes, my, my blade shape is completely different. Or it can be. Can be. Now, does that mean I don't like any of the other blade shapes or I don't like to carry any of the other blade shapes? No. But my preferred carry always falls into the, the well-balanced blade shape for me being able to puncture, utility cuts, using the belly, Cutting straps, getting behind straps and, you know, cutting them and being able to do push cuts and basically getting, you know, all of the blade shape to good use, especially if I'm at work or, like I said, for everyday carry. So there you guys go. Like I said, we will, I will try to come up with a video here in the near future where we talk about geometry and blade shapes and you know, the best balance for each blade shape with what grind or maybe even possibly good steels for certain blade shapes. That's not a bad idea. But there you guys go. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.